Good night, good night, good night. Just give everybody a few minutes to jump on in. As soon as you touch down, let me know that you're inside. Let me get the Insta family up. Sorry, yeah, the Instagram family. Let me get our good folks over here up and running. Marlene, good night, good night. You ain't stick. I love it. <laughs> good night, Marlene. How is how are you doing today? As soon as you guys reach, let me know in the comments you guys are inside. Melina, hey, good night. How are you doing? Instagram fam, what is going on? Kyle, good night. The boss Kevin, good night. How are you guys doing? Vicky, how are you? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So we're just giving, we're giving uh, a few minutes for everybody to tune in. Nice, Marlene, you're working, you're multitasking, I love it. Ian, you're inside tonight. And I, I, I know that this is the type of topic that you love, so. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, Ian. Jean, is it Jean or is it Jean? Good night, good night, good night. Instagram fam, what up? Thrustin, what's going on? Elroy, what is up? So we're just giving everybody a couple of minutes. You guys know how we do, um, you know. This is this is one of those topics where um, we know that it's on everybody's mind, right? The minute we start talking about getting paid, <laughs> you, you're damn sure everybody's tuning in. <laughs> the minute we start talking about getting paid. That is when people tune in. People don't want to know about the boring stuff like building your website or your SEO. People want to know how to get paid. Am I right? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. And, and you know, I, I forget what my, sec my second pronunciation was. So I'm thinking my second one was Jean because I see the, uh, the, the accent. Nice, nice, nice. How are you guys doing tonight? Instagram fam, what up? Gerard Rodriguez, what up? Black Art, what's going on? Mr. Dental, what is up? Turtle Love Waste Beads, good night. The one and only Ledgers, good night. Carla Paris is in the building. Carla, how are you doing tonight? Like I said, the minute we talk about getting paid, People tune in, and this is this has been one of those hot topics, right? Um, we all have been looking at different payment methods um, now that we now that the Caribbean is forced into this digital transformation. Everybody is looking how to get paid. All right, so I think I'm just gonna try to crap my style. I think we can go about getting started, all right? So um, as you guys know, you guys can trust me because I'm a, I got my Technofile drink. This is like one of my favorite t-shirts. Whoever, whoever did this, I gotta get some more of these, man. But yeah, so good night, everybody. I think it's about time we can get started. We can get started, Instagram fam, everybody tuning in. Anybody who, 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 who's missing the beginning, they can always catch the replay. Always remember that the replays will be um, available as soon as the broadcast is done. You can either view it on my Facebook page or you can click the link in bio if you are on the Instagram live and you guys can go to the website and you could watch the, re the replays of the webinars from there. All right. And if you tuned into last night's webinar, you purchased the webinar, 
Thank you. Um, the response from that webinar has been great so far, and I'm glad a lot of you guys caught some good gems in the SEO webinar that we did last night. All right. So without further ado, good night, everybody. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Karen Rose. I am the owner and founder and the mobile expert behind Droid Island. And I am now most recently also a online business educator. And I, I almost kind of hate that title because, you know, it, it, it infers that I'm out here giving business advice. But really what I'm doing is I'm teaching people about how to build their business online and all of the technology that goes into doing that. So people in the Caribbean can start to build their digital presence and get paid online. All right. So if you guys are tuning in from my instagram feed sorry not instagram if you guys are tuning in from the facebook feed you will see one second wonderful hold on instagram i'm gonna have to turn you guys around so you guys can see what's going on so tonight's topic is all about the online payment methods in Trinidad and Tobago. Woo! Listen, we need likes, we need hearts, we need everything tonight because we're talking about how to get paid, all right? So here's the agenda for tonight. All right. So we have an update on PayPal. We're going to be talking about WePay as a payment service. Do you guys remember Paywise? We're going to talk about Paywise too because they got some updates. We're also going to be talking about Payoneer and the links, Visa, debit cards. And we will also be talking about social pay. All right. So you guys know the drill. Likes, hearts. Let me know you guys are inside. Simone, have a good night. How you doing? Nice. So let's jump right into it, all right? So, first things first. Kira, good night. Miss Maria, good night. First things first, we have an update on PayPal, folks. We have an update. And I know you guys want to know if it's good news or bad news. I know you want to know if it's good news or bad news. And I'm here to report we may have some good news with PayPal. Now, the last time, about a week ago, we had the webinar where we brought on Aldwin Wayne, um, CEO of WePay, and we were talking about the decision for PayPal to stop depositing the uh, funds from PayPal to Visa recharge cards. Um, one of the misconceptions was, what the hell is a recharge card, right? A recharge card is simply either a prepaid visa or a visa debit card. So here in Trinidad, that would have been the eligible card would have been JMMB or your Venture Credit Union card. That would have been the that would have been the two banks that you could have taken your PayPal funds and deposited to. And with JMMB, you were able to do that with either having a personal bank account or having a business account that was that's a registered sole trader right so if it was a limited liability account um, they were not going to be giving you the visa debit cards and i have a couple of them here so this is what the jmmb visa card looks like right that is what the jmmb visa card looks like you either get the black or the gold, they both have different features or different limits, I should say, but you either get one or the other when you register with JMB and you open up a personal account or if you open up a sole trader account, right? So PayPal would have been able to deposit those funds to that account. And also if you had a prepaid visa. So for us in Trinidad, that would have been like the Republic VTM card, right? Now they stopped doing that due to a policy change, right? Policy change, I won't get into it, we have the other webinar for that, but there was a, there was, um, there was a policy change with Visa, 
and Visa, I mean, and PayPal announced they'd stop depositing the funds in those cards. So what's the update? I reached out to PayPal. JMMB also reached out to confirm exactly what was the error messages and stuff that I was getting. And I reported what I was getting and what a couple other people were getting, right? When we tried to make, when we tried to make a deposit to our JMMB cards or even the Republic VTM card, PayPal kept telling us that we've exceeded our withdrawal limit. And that, that was going on for a couple of days, right? When I reached out to PayPal and I screenshotted everything, I told them exactly what was going on. And I also showed them the previous message of what the previous PayPal agent had said with regards to the policy change. The, rep, the second rep that I dealt with said, hey, you know what? Let me check out your account. There is an error on your account. We fixed it. Go and try it again. So the next time I went into PayPal, which would have been yesterday, right? I was able to make a withdrawal. I will say that again. Last week, PayPal was blocked. Like I could not withdraw any funds and it was not just me. It was quite a few other people. We all shared the same grievances. We were all getting the same messages about us exceeding the withdrawal limit and it was just blocked. Um, we reached out to PayPal. PayPal sent us a message saying that Trinidad has changed, or not just Trinidad, but the Caribbean um, a policy was changed, and PayPal will not be depositing any funds to reach to Visa recharge cards. Right? Since that, since I contacted them again, and they apparently seen the error that was on my account and fixed it, I was able to withdraw money to my JMB account. Now, here's the thing, right? It also happened instantaneously. So the minute I hit withdraw from PayPal, it deposited into my bank account, my JMB account, instantaneously. And due to COVID-19, they've actually removed the $5 um, deposit fee. That fee, is in five, that fee is in US. So they actually removed that $5 deposit fee um, for um, because of the whole entire COVID, COVID situation, right? Now, what does that mean on a wide scale? Because the other people that I spoke with that were having the issues with their, their accounts being blocked are still having their accounts blocked. <laughs> so the update is, if you are using PayPal as your processor, if you are using PayPal to receive money, contact PayPal. Have them check out your account and see if there's an error. Because, like I said, there are still the people that I was discussing with this, there was over 10 people that I was dealing with last week and we were all getting the same blocks, all of a sudden, right? So this wasn't just me. I contacted them, they fixed my account. Everybody needs to either one, try to withdraw the money and see if they get that error. And two, if you are getting the error, reach out to PayPal representatives. You can't call them. You have to go to the contact page and you got to send them an email, right? But the turnaround time was actually pretty quickly. It, it took them like 24 hours. It was within 24 hours for them to reach back out to me. Let them know you are being blocked. This is the error message. Send a screenshot if possible. Have them check out your account. And if it is that they can fix it, great. Because you know what? A lot of people are using it to send invoices to, to businesses and companies that they deal with across, across the world. And that's how they get paid. So they're not even necessarily using it as a payment processor like on the website. The, the people that are paying them have their bank accounts connected. Because again, for us in the Caribbean, we use the, the Visa cards because we cannot synchronize a bank account to our PayPal. But abroad in other countries, they can use their bank accounts in PayPal and pay you, right? So this is a huge issue for a lot of us, right? Even if we're not using it as a payment processor on our website, there are still many people who are sending uh, PayPal invoices to companies overseas and getting paid through PayPal. So if you are getting that error message, I'm reporting to you that I contacted them 
and I was able to deposit my PayPal funds to my JMMB bank account, all right? And that was not the case just a few days ago, all right? So that is the update with PayPal. Next up with the ways on how to get paid online. And you know what? I'm going to take a quick question. I see Catherine said, uh, what's, what about the Republic VTM cards? So the Republic VTM cards, two things to really know about that is one, the Republic VTM cards have been discontinued since last year. So they're no longer giving that out. If you have a Republic VTM card, um, it's good until it expires. So we'll check your, expi your expiration date and you have it until that expires. Um, also, you can deposit your PayPal money directly to your Republic VTM card. So keep that in mind as well. All right. Those are really the two things to note about the VTM card. Oh, and three, if you have a Republic VTM card, right, the... The Republic VTM card is one of the only cards that we have access to in Trinidad that keeps the U.S. currency. So when I deposit the U.S. funds from my PayPal, if you have a Republic VTM card kicking about, when you deposit those funds to that card, it stays in U.S. That's a great way to keep your money in U.S., right? So again... If you have a Republic VTM card and it has not expired on you, you can deposit your PayPal funds to your Republic VTM card and it will stay in U.S. currency. Then you could go to an ATM in the country that has U.S., take out your money and you can go shopping abroad and you just adhere to the limits of that, of that VTM card. All right. So. Let me just grab a little sip. I hope you guys are watching this. I hope you guys have some rum in your cup. I sure as heck do. Um, you know, this quarantine life, <laughs> you gotta you gotta do what you can, man. But I hope you guys are sipping some wine with me too. You guys already know how I do, all right? We talk business, we sip wine, we drink a little rum, we have a wonderful time, all right? Nice. So next up is we pay as a payment service provider all right and before i jump into WePay, i have to give a big shout out to my mother who's watching the live stream hi mom <laughs> nice all right so mom duke's out the way she's in toronto uh keeping good all right so we pay as a as a payment service provider right so how can you use we pay all right how can you use WePay? We see WePay, right? I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it funky with you guys. I I I tell all of this all the time. Listen, people see WePay. People don't know what WePay is. And if you're one of those people who don't fully understand what WePay is, give me some likes. Give me some hearts. Let me know. I ain't talking crap. Okay. If you are somebody who does not fully understand what WePay is, that is fine. Because the majority of the questions I get about WePay is, what is WePay and what does WePay do, right? So we actually had him on uh, our webinar last week where he gave a good breakdown of WePay. So you guys can definitely check that out. But I'm going to be recapping that as well, all right? Good. Again, you guys, you guys let me know. Uh, if you guys heard about WePay but just don't fully understand what they do, again, drop those likes, drop those hearts. Any questions you guys have about WePay, drop them in there. What I can answer, I'm going to answer for you guys. Whatever I can't answer, I will go and get the answers for you, all right? One quick question. Can PayPal payments still be linked to a Visa credit card? Yeah, Melinda. So that's what I was talking about a couple of minutes ago. Um, I was able to do it yesterday. Um, some people are still having that problem. So I said everybody to reach out to a PayPal representative and have them check out their individual account. So WePay. WePay does a few things, right? Um, and I'm going to talk about how I use WePay as well. So one, you can send a invoice from WePay, a clickable invoice, just like how you would in PayPal, you could send that invoice with WePay 
and people can will get it in their in their emails. They'll be able to open it up and they'll be able to use their credit cards and pay. Right? You'll get an email stating that hey, this person just paid your invoice in full with their credit card. Right? So you can use it to send invoices, and that person can pay with either a uh, a credit card. Or if they're in a country, or if they're, if they're in the same country as you, they could use a WePay voucher, and they can pay with the WePay voucher. And the WePay vouchers are available at anywhere, any of the WePay agents listed across the country, and you can go to their website and find out the full list of their agents where you can get those vouchers. And they work kind of like how you would go top up a BMO on a digital card. Person goes in, says, hey, I want to get a top-up voucher for... Five thousand uh, dollars. They give them the money. They get this top up card. The person can either a top up their account, like they would have their own WePay account. They can top it up, and they can do WePay to WePay transfers and payments. Or the person can, if the person is not tech savvy, the person can just say, "Hey, here's a picture," and they can WhatsApp it to you, and you could use that WePay voucher to top up your own account. All right. So one WePay, you could use it to send invoices. Right. Next way that you could use WePay is you could use WePay as a payment processor on your website. So if you are on WordPress, and let me let me you know what? I just want to confirm all of the payment plugins that they have that they have set up because remember, right? Aldwin came on this show, the Digital Age show, and said that they were fast-tracking their plugins, right? I know I was not the only person that heard that, right? So we're going to keep him, we're going to keep him to it. I am on their website right now, and I am checking to see what plugins they have available, All right? So you guys, on Facebook, you guys can watch with me. On Instagram, let me let me turn this let me turn this around for you guys. All right. So WePay currently supports WooCommerce. Right. They support WooCommerce credit card and voucher. They support Magento. Wix is still coming soon. Shopify is still coming soon, and they support OpenCart. All right. So that again is they support WooCommerce. They support Magento, Wix, Shopify is still coming soon, and they support Open Car. So, you guys know, and if you don't know, Aldwin tends to, you know, see what's happening online. He keeps his, he keeps his ear to the ground, all right? So, I want you guys to, to collectively say, Aldwin, what the frick? Where them plugins? The man came on the show last week, big, 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 and said, hey, we're fast-tracking Wix. We're fast-tracking Shopify. Where are we? Where, where are our plugins? Yeah, yeah, we'll have, we'll have to buff them. We'll have to buff them, right? I know he's going to see this, and now uh, we have to buff them. Where are them plugins? You have people out here with Wix sites and Shopify sites who cannot use PayPal right now, because again, some of those people that are still having issues receiving their payments with PayPal are people that have websites on Shopify and Wix and cannot receive the money. They can't receive the money, all right? So where them plugins at, right? Let me let me highlight this. Yes, yes, Tamara, T tell them again. Where them plugins? We, we, we waiting for it. <laughs> So, what WooCommerce is is WooCommerce is a is a, the shopping plugin that powers WordPress. So, if you are on WordPress, you can download the plugins, either their credit card plugin or their voucher plugin, or both, and you can install them on your website. And then, people that are on your website shopping will be able to use their credit card and pay you. And then, it goes into your WePay wallet. And then it takes uh, one to five business days for the money to go from your WePay wallet into your bank account. All right. 
takes one to five business days for the money to leave your uh, WePay wallet to be deposited to your bank account. All right. Let me just take a look and see a couple of things that's happening in the comments. Uh, Kevin says, WePay is allowing you to share payment links via social media such as Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, which is awesome. Yes, yeah, so that's actually a part of the new concierge service where professionals can register. Um, they can register their accounts and their information with their payment service, get listed, and you could actually use those payment links that they give you and send them out to people so that they can pay you by just those payment links. So that's a nice little feature. Les says the plugins are all well and good, but 10 business days for local payments to be credited is crazy. I've never had uh, anything close to 10, to 10 business days. My payments have always become, been within one to three days. Um, they, now, I will say this. They, it, was one to, it was one to five business days, and I noticed they changed it to say up to 10 business days. So I'm not going to say you're wrong, Les. Because technically, you're not wrong. They say 10 business days. Although, I cannot support that because it's never happened to me. It's always been within one to three, one to three business days. I've always gotten the money. And I've never had an issue with, um, with it. When I did have issues was like two years ago. When they were now coming out, I did have issues. That's actually how me, how I was actually even became acquainted to Aldwin. Was me cussing them out. If I pull up my emails to Aldwin from two years ago, that, it was me cussing them out. And I was like, yo, why am I waiting so long for business days? Your thing says one to three days, right? What the hell is going on? So, again, if, 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 if you have had it, if you've had 10 business days, well, but then what's the alternative? Because guess what? Remember, we, we're still limited in terms of how we can accept payments here in Trinidad. There are still people that are telling me that with their PayPal accounts, they're still waiting 30 days. So if you are in a situation where PayPal is giving you 30 days wait for your money, then 10 days is, well, 10 days is better. It ain't good, but it's still better than 30 days, right? So we, we, we uh, again, we are kind of limited with, with the payment options that, that we do have. So you can use them to power your shop as a payment processor. You could send invoices. They just released some new services where there is a professional services um, that what you can do is you could register yourself with their professional services payment page and people can go to that list and see every single person registered with them and they could pay that person directly the amount, whatever, whatever is agreed upon, whatever. Right, so that's another service that that we pay is offering. Um, now, here's how I use WePay and PayPal um, because that's something that is one of the top questions that gets asked. Why should someone use WePay over PayPal or vice versa? Right, there is no silver bullet. They both have their pros and cons. Right, I use both. I use both. One is not better than the other. It's just that they both have their pros and cons, and I use them in very specific situations. All right. So this is how I use both WePay and PayPal. My Droid Island website, where I sell smartphones. Right, people can purchase those products online because I'm selling with NTNT. I use WePay to process those payments because we pay fees are much cheaper and are also in TT, right? So we pay fees are standard credit card rate, 3% plus a $2 transaction fee on top of the 3%, right? Um, and that's in TT. So on the website, if you purchase a phone, we pay processes that payments for me. And I use that because I'm selling with NTNT and it is cheaper for we pay to process my payments, all right? Now, if I were to use PayPal to do the exact same thing, what happens now is a couple of things. For one, as a business owner, it is more expensive to use PayPal 
period. The fees are so much higher. And on top of that, they're in US. So PayPal fees are like 5.4%, right? And then you have a deposit fee. So just so as of right now, because of COVID, they took away the deposit fee. But the standard deposit fee is five US. Every time you want to withdraw the money from your PayPal account, it's five US. Or you can wait the 30 days for the automatic transfer to happen. And they do that for free on the first of every single month. Right? So you lose more money just by simply using PayPal. And your fees are in US. Now here's the here's here's another problem with using PayPal, right? If you are using PayPal on your website to process your payments or you're using PayPal to send out invoices and you're doing that you you are selling to people within your country. So we're going to use TNT. The majority of my people on this live are going to be from Trinidad, right? If you're using PayPal to send out the invoices or you're using it on your website to process the payments, every single time somebody in the country has to pay you and it's processed through PayPal, money leaves Trinidad because the money has to get settled in the U.S. So that's currency, that, that's, that's Forex going out. Every single time someone pays you that's in the same country as you, Forex is going out. So we, just by using PayPal, are also part of the problem of the Forex drain. Because PayPal is not a Trinidad company. They don't, they don't settle in Trinidad. So every single time we use PayPal, so if, if, if I have a website and I'm using PayPal as a processor, if somebody in Trinidad is going to jump on the website and pay me, money goes out. So that's another thing to keep in mind, right? So us just using it also is a drain on the Forex situation as well. But here's the problem. WePay does not integrate with a lot of tools, at least, at least not in a plug and play scenario, right? So I use PayPal for things like, um, so when I do events, I use a popular platform called Eventbrite. Eventbrite is a, a, like a, like a ticketing platform that handles all of your tickets or whatever. That's not important. But if I want people to book their tickets and book their seats into my workshops, because I love how that platform lays everything out, that platform uses PayPal to process the payments. All right. If I were to use WePay to do that, I would have to get a developer to get the WePay API and build a custom solution uh, for Eventbrite. I don't even know how that would work, but that's essentially what would have to happen. A developer would have to get involved, build that solution so it can process the payments. With Eventbrite and PayPal, PayPal is hit the drop down, select which payment processor you want, select PayPal, and use that to process your payments, right? PayPal is the number one payment processor globally, so it integrates with everything. Another thing that I use it for is I use Acuity Scheduler. So if any of you have booked either discovery calls or one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, when you go to my website and you uh, pay for your one-on-one -on -one time, right, uh, that uses PayPal. And PayPal processes the payments for my scheduling tool. Any tool that is a third party that you can think of, PayPal is going to be the number one option to use to process the payment. And it just streamlines your entire process. I can't do that with WePay. So if somebody says to me, hey, I want to book your monthly consultation, what are your fees? Because I have to send an invoice, I will use WePay. Why? Because I want the payments to be processed. I, want, I, I don't want to pay the hefty fees to process the payments when I send an invoice. I will not send a PayPal invoice because I lose more money using PayPal. So I will send a uh, WePay invoice to anybody who has to pay me, right? And I do that because I, uh, WePay has, WePay fees are cheaper. Right, but if I'm using any sort of third-party tools 
to integrate within my business or my website. Um, like again, Eventbrite, Acuity, those are the two things I can think of off the top of my head that I use. I use PayPal because it is the it is the like almost the default payment processor for those tools, and it just integrates easily easily, and I do not have to go and contact a developer to build out a custom solution for me. All right. So let me see. Uh, I got some messages from Thrusted. You can with a credit card or a Visa bank card. I load my WePay account with my Scotia Bank Visa debit card. Okay, but okay, all right, cool, no problem. Um, yeah. So I hope that gives you an idea of how WePay and PayPal can be used. Why you would use one or the other, right? PayPal fees are more expensive, but it integrates with everything. With WePay, the fees are a lot cheaper, and you just need to know what situation to use it in. If you're gonna send an invoice, and the other thing is, right, WePay is not only for Trinidad. So if your people are paying you from another country, you can send them a WePay invoice. And WePay allows you to either keep the funds in TT, or you can apply for their US account and when you send out your invoice and people pay you, it will go into your US account. And once you have a US account in TT, your WePay account can deposit the funds to your US account here in TT and it will stay in US. So if you're going to send out an invoice, you have, you, can, you have the option of do you want it in TT or do you want to, do you want to collect that money in US? That is completely up to you. You have to make the decision as to what is best for your business. Okay? Nice. Um, Thruston says, another advantage is you can pay to WePay with your Visa debit links cards. How do you do that? I haven't seen that or heard about it, and I don't think that's something that Alden said could happen. But let me know, let me know, let me know, because I'm not, we're going to get to Visa debit links cards, but yeah, let me know how you're doing that. Next up, in terms of online payment methods within Trinidad and Tobago, is Paywise. So who here is using Paywise still? Let me know in the comments, drop some hearts, drop some likes, show Paywise some love. If you are using Paywise, let me know. If you have no idea what Paywise is, or if you thought they were defunct, again, let me know in the comments below so I can kind of see uh, what those questions are with respect to Paywise, so I could clear anything up with Paywise for you guys, right? So, what Paywise is, it is a way, an offline way for us to move money. Right? Referring to other options, top of WePay card. Okay, but he was saying Visa debt, Visa uh, with the links, Visa debit cards. Links cards, he said, you know. So that's why I'm not too sure. But anyways, um, Paywise is an offline way for you to pay people, right? So how I use Paywise is I have a Paywise card. The people who do not have a credit card in Trinidad, what they can do is they can go to a Paywise agent and once they have my Paywise account, they could then go ahead and make a payment with cash. I would then get a notification that somebody has sent this money and once that person sends me the, uh, like a screenshot of a confirmation, um, I will know who it was, where that money was coming from, but they can pay me with Paywise. They go to any Paywise agent, they deposit the funds, and then I would be notified that, hey, a payment of X amount of money was made, and then the next business day, I receive the cash into my bank account. All right? So this is good if you have a lot of people who are, who do not have a bank account. So not a, either, either they don't have a bank account or they don't have a credit card. That person can go with you. They can go with your your um, your Paywise account number. 
They can go to a paywise agent, give them the information, they give them the cash, you get a notification in your email that you have been paid. So there's pros and cons to that, right? It is a 100% manual uh, transaction, meaning that when people pay with a credit card, right, they could just go to your website or you can they can receive an invoice from you and they could use their credit card to pay you. If I tell somebody I have to give you my paywise account or you don't you don't have a you don't have a um, a credit card, when you get my paywise account, you have to go to your nearest paywise agent. They used to be at the NLCB Lotto Boots. They're no longer there. Now they have their own network of people. So you have to go find out where that paywise agent is, go with your account number, and then pay that person. Listen, I can't tell you how many times where somebody got an invoice, they got the payment number, and they're like, yeah, I'm on the way to go pay right now. And then three, four days go by, and they're like, yo, I got sidetracked. I couldn't make the payment. Uh, and then they, they go in and make that payment, right? Anytime you take away uh, impulse buying, always be prepared for delays. So because people have to leave their house and go to a paywise agent to make that payment, there's, there's issues with that. Now, because of COVID-19, Paywise, just a couple days ago, I believe it was like Thursday or Friday, made an announcement that they're releasing an app, right? So with their, with their new app now, what can happen is um, somebody can top up their Paywise account, right? So they go onto their online banking and they can transfer money from their bank account into their Paywise account. Once the money is now in their Paywise wallet, they could send that money to anybody who is a registered business with Paywise. So while that kind of fixes the issue of not having to go in person to pay with cash, the problem is, is that the, the, offline, the offline section was, was, was great for people that don't have a bank account or don't even know how to use online banking. And trust me, folks, there's still a lot of people that do not know how to use online banking. So now that COVID-19 and sitting places are closed, we are now asking people to jump in on their online accounts and transfer the money to Paywise, the app, and then use the Paywise app to then transfer you the money. The first thing I thought when I seen that was, why would I do that? when I could just give them my bank account number to my business and they could just send me the money. Why would I give that person the extra step? Plus, I lose money if they pay me with paywise because I have to pay the paywise fees. So for me, it doesn't make no sense. Like I wouldn't, I'm not telling anybody to use paywise to pay me because now that the stores are closed and you have to use online banking, right? Before, the people could just take their cash. These are people who either don't have online banking, don't know about it, or, you know, just don't have a bank account, right? We're asking people now to use online banking, transfer the money to your Paywise account, and then transfer the money from your Paywise account to me, the business. Rather than just saying, hey, client, here is my banking information, do an online bank transfer. And you don't get charged no fees for using Paywise. So keep that in mind, right? Again, they just announced it a couple of days ago. Some people might have heard about it. Some people might have not. Some people might have been hella excited that, that Paywise has not. But to me, it doesn't make no sense. I'm not going to tell somebody to, here's my Paywise. Now go in your online banking, transfer the money to Paywise, and then use Paywise to then transfer the money to me. I would just show them my payment information page with my account information there. There's the bank account, just online bank transfer the money to me. Done talk. And I save money. I don't get hit with the Paywise fees to receive that money. You feel me? If that makes sense, folks, 
hearts, likes, let me know you're here, let me know you're in the building, let me know if I'm on the right track. If that makes sense to you, please drop some hearts, drop some likes, right? Yes, yeah, Steph, exactly. Then on top of that, Paywise takes their fees. All right, so keep that in mind. If you're using Paywise and you're telling your clients to transfer the money, you're giving them extra steps and you're still losing money. Rather than you could just give them your bank information, they can online, they can just transfer that information over to you. All right, so that's essentially Paywise. If you're still here with me, please take a drink. I'm parched, you know, I'm, I'm a little, a little parched. <laughs> All right, so next up on the docket is Payoneer and Lynx Visa debit cards. So, who has a Lynx Visa debit card? If you're with Scotia, you should have that right now. Scotia is essentially the only bank that has rolled out their Lynx Visa debit cards. SCB has them in testing, a cup, uh, some employees have it. They're supposed to have theirs uh, rolled up, but now COVID-19 is it. I don't know what the expected date that is to be. Um, also, the rest of the banks are supposed to have, excuse me, the rest of the banks are supposed to have their visa, their links, visa debit cards rolled out as well. So before I jump into Payoneer, let me let me tackle the, the visa debit cards first. Yes, Tamis, rum and coke in the glass. I hope you have your glass too. Right. Oh, sorry, uh, Instagram fam. I, I, I dirty the uh, the lens. All right. Nice. All right. So here's what the Visa debit cards look like. The Lynx Visa debit cards. So when they announced. Lynx Visa Debit last year, July. There was a private event. Scotia Bank invited me out with a couple other media folks to, to, to mingle and drink and hear all about their new fantastic Visa Debit cards, right? So, yes, Harvey, we're, we're, we, we didn't get to JMBAs yet. Right now, we're tackling Lynx Visa Debit. There's a difference. Let me, let me get to that. All right. So, with when they announced their Lynx Visa debit cards, I was hella excited because the only way for e-commerce and online payments to thrive within Trinidad is if everybody has a Visa debit card, right? So right now, the only Visa debit card that can be used online is JMB or Venture Credit Union because JMB powers their cards, right? With this flicking card, with this Visa debit card, check on the back. On the back, it says links. Right. So if you guys don't know, InfoLinks is the company that has built out the network that all of the major banks, except for JMB, have an agreement with. Um, and Infolinks, you know, uh, powers all of their cards and they have built out all the terminals within the country, right? So the reason why Lynx went and got the Visa debit cards was because they were, well, the banks were not in compliance for the international security regulations. The banks needed to be chipped. They needed a chipped card. Visa, sorry, Infolinks went to Visa to get the chip cards. However, what they did was when they got the cards, they turned off e-commerce. They turned off e-commerce. Now, when it came out, the e-commerce part of the card was actually activated. I was using the card to make purchases online. I actually have videos of me shopping with my, with my Scotiabank Visa debit cards. However, that turned into a huge controversy and I ended up having a meeting with Infolinks and a meeting with Scotia Bank to figure out exactly why the cards were able to be used online, right? 
And they ended up finally getting it turned off back in November. So the Visa debit cards, the Lynx Visa debit cards cannot be used online. They are only chipped for security purposes. That is the only reason these cards can be used. They cannot be used to shop online. All right? Abroad, the reason why e-commerce can thrive is because everybody who has a bank card has a Visa debit card that's chipped and pinned for them to be able to use it online. Therefore, if anybody sends you an invoice or if anybody has a website, and they want you to make a payment online, the person just uses their bank card, right? And you know what, Sarah? Yes, you're right, because I have that here too. The Unitrust Visa debit cards. Again, another Visa debit card. This is from Unitrust, cannot be used online, all right? So Lynx Visa debit cards cannot be used and the UTC Visa cards cannot be used. Only JMMB. Listen, I have every single card. All right? I have every single card. Listen. And I have more in my wallet. All right? So, abroad, everybody has a Visa debit card that can be used to make online payments or pay invoices. That's why e-commerce can thrive. Here, Lynx has blocked all the cards. So that's the, that's the Lynx cards with Scotia, the Lynx cards coming up with FCB, RBC, and Republic. All of them are currently blocked, cannot be used for e-commerce. Only thing they can be used for is to for security. And also, if you travel, you're going to be able to withdraw up to 120 USD per day if you travel. You can go to a ATM or point of sale and spend up to 120 US a day. That is it, folks. All right. So it's not a card. I'm talking about the Lynx Visa debit cards. Lynx Visa debit cards cannot be used to shop online. Yes, Johan, Venture Credit Union. Yes, you can use a Venture Credit Union card, like I said, because JMB provides their cards, right? So only JMB and Venture Credit Union can use their Visa debit cards to shop online. The limit for JMB and Venture Credit Union is 500 USD per month. It's a very low limit, but hey, it's, access, it's, it's some access to Forex. If you want to use a card that has um, a better limit, the FCB prepaid MasterCard can use up to 1,000 USD per day. So what I would recommend to everybody is go and get the, the FCB prepaid MasterCard and go and get yourself the JMB uh, Visa debit card because that will give you more access to Forex. You'll get a thousand over here and you'll get uh, you'll get 500 with JMB. All right. But again, to recap, FCB, I mean, I'm sorry, anything branded links Visa debit. Let me hide my secret pin. Anything branded links. Visa debit card cannot be used online to make any purchases whatsoever. However, they might, and I, I can't confirm, but they might change it to just TT only. So that may be something that happens where you may be able to use the Lynx Visa debit cards for online and TT currency only. So keep an eye on that. I sure as hell am. And if that gets confirmed anytime soon, again, I can't, I can't confirm it. I don't work there, but I can't confirm it. But if they do, trust me, you'll be the first to know. All right? Payoneer. So Payoneer um, pretty much gives you like a kind of like a U.S. bank account or a U.S. card where you can deposit money from things like PayPal. So you can use PayPal and deposit to your Payoneer card and they actually send you. I don't have a Payoneer card. I actually just 
I actually just registered for my for my Payoneer account today. The Payoneer system is not one that I use, but one of my good friends, um, of a few people that use their they use their Payoneer cards religiously, right? So I registered for mine too because, like I said, I want all the solutions. I want everything. I want to test out everything. I want access to as much Forex as I can. I want to be able to receive money from a variety of different ways. I don't want to have no PayPal scare where one day they wake up and say, hey, we're not depositing funds. And then the next day it's, oh, there's an error. But then everybody else is still, they still can't deposit the funds. I don't want to be limited. All right? So that's why I registered for Payoneer today. So how Payoneer works is that they, you can get a Payoneer card and they give you like a US account and you could use PayPal to deposit the funds from PayPal over to Payoneer. Also, if you're using, if you're using things like Amazon affiliates, you can deposit your money from Amazon affiliates into your Payoneer account. If you have registered with platforms like Fiverr or Upwork as a freelancer and you want to get paid, you can use your Payoneer card and have people pay you with that. Also, what Payoneer does is they take your banking information and they can do a direct deposit from Payoneer into your local bank account in Trinidad. When I did the registration today, it gave me every single bank to pick from. I put in my number, it had the SWIFT code and the drop down menu, everything. And Payoneer does direct deposits into your local bank account. So I recommend to everybody, check out Payoneer. Again, just tell you to check it out. If it is a solution that works for you, great. If not, no problem. The goal of this webinar is to let you know about the variety of payment methods that we have, that we have access to where we can get paid, all right? Payoneer is one of them. So you can use it to transfer your PayPal funds to your Payoneer card. If you are on Upwork, Fiverr, any one of those freelance platforms, you could use uh, Payoneer to get you to get those funds um, paid to your card. You can also use Amazon affiliates. And if you're making affiliate marketing money, you could use Amazon affiliates and get paid on your, pay, on your Payoneer card as well. Again, I just registered today. What I will do is I'm going to be organizing with one of my guys for a webinar that we have coming up who will talk to you about how he uses Payoneer, but that's not gonna be the main topic, but we're gonna to touch on that because um, it's gonna tie into some of the other things that we're gonna be talking about on that webinar, all right? Nice. Tamara asked, does Payoneer have a website plugin? No, they're not a payment processor. They're just a bank account for you to receive money. That's all they are. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Keisha asks, is it true that they only receive payments from organizations? Uh, yes. So that is why, again, that's why I said PayPal. Um, you could transfer the money from PayPal. You could get the money from Amazon affiliates. You can get it the money from um, any of the freelance platforms. You could get those that money transferred over to you. Um, they do not receive money from everyday people. But again, you have other options that you could send people invoices to get paid from for just regular people. All right. Take a drink with me, folks. I know I can't be the only alcoholic on this webinar tonight, right? Monday evening, we're in quarantine. We're learning. We got a drink too, man. So please, take a little drink with me if you got some rum in your cup. All right. So, next up is social pay. All right. So, social pay. Just give me one second. All right. So what Social Pay does, right? Now, Social Pay, uh, the owner of Social Pay is also the owner of Overmill Web Hosting, and he's in the chat, and he can answer some questions about, about, uh, about Social Pay as well. But what they do is one of my favorite things that I've been recommending like crazy to people is they build bridge links to your e-commerce site to WePay. So let's just say, you are somebody who has a website and your website is on Shopify, you're on Wix, you're on uh, Squarespace, Sorry. you're on any platform that does not have a, um, you don't have a way to get paid, right? Social pay can build what they call a bridge link where essentially it checks out 
with WePay on a WordPress platform, and then after the payment clears, it routes the person back to your thank you page on your platform. So that is a workaround um, for those people who do not have a who do not have an option with Shopify, Squarespace, or Wix to use PayPal and get paid for whatever reason, right? Whether you're blocked, whether you don't have a um, a JMB card, and before we hold on, hold on, folks, Instagram people, Instagram fam. I just got the alert. We have 20 seconds remaining on this live. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the live and you guys can jump back on and join us. Facebook fam, give me one second. Let me just get the Instagram people back inside. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, folks. Let me just get them back in. Nice, we're live back over, we're, we're, we're back live over here. All right, so keep in mind folks, right? PayPal only deposits to Visa enabled cards. That's it, they only deposit to Visa enabled cards, right? So if, um, if you have Wix or Shopify and you are trying to make, you're trying to get paid, right? and you do not have a JMMB card to receive that money, remember, PayPal's acting wonky, so you gotta, figure, you gotta go contact PayPal if you are blocked, right? See if you can get paid on that platform, but if you cannot use them, they, um, SocialPay can build a bridge link for your Wix, Squarespace, Shopify website. It will then, uh, the payment, the payment processing itself will happen on their bridge, which would be used with WePay, and then it would route the person back over to your checkout or your thank you page on your respective platform. Next thing that Social Pay does, they create payment links to receive payments from clients via WePay. You do not need to have a website. So what a pay link is, right? So let's just say, so Steph's in the comments, right? Steph, say hi to everybody, please. Let's just say if uh, if somebody says, "Hey, I have I have this uh, I got this book, okay? Right? I got this book. I want to buy it from you. How much?" I could send that person a link with the amount of money I want them to pay, and they can pay it. It would it would be processed through WePay, but I'd be able to send that link um, to various social media platforms. So all they would do is click on that link, WePay comes up and it will say, hey, the book costs $10, yes or no, hit yes, and then you put in your credit card information or your WePay voucher and you make that payment for that book. That is what a pay link is. So they build pay links for you using WePay as a processor. Next up. They create monthly subscription payments that pulls from your customer's credit card automatically. Now here's what I'm upset, right? And I don't really hold punches regardless of who's on the live. Steph, I'm gonna hit you a clout because I want subscription payments and you told me I couldn't handle subscription payments. So now that I'm seeing you offering it, I'm, I'm, I'm a little offended. <laughs> So he offers subscription payments. So if you guys have a business where you guys need to be charging people on a recurring monthly basis or however, you can link him. Social Pay can build that solution for you or so automatically charge people's credit cards. All right. Next, custom point of sale that works with WePay and PayPal. <laughs> Social Pay on a roll. <laughs> I like that. And, and last but not least, um, they do. They have a custom website builder with WePay fully integrated, similar to Shopify and Wix. All right, that is a custom website builder with WePay fully integrated with uh, that is similar to Shopify and Wix. So, Steph, what I want you to do for me is drop a link to Social Pay in the comments. Last time I did it. Uh, I think I typed in something wrong. I didn't go anywhere, but drop the link in the in the description for me so people can go and check out 
um, all the services and get in contact with you about social pay. All right. So to recap, the payment methods that we can get paid from in Trinidad. Number one is PayPal, right? Now keep in mind, PayPal is depositing no problems with regular Visa credit cards. If you have a regular Visa credit card that you had to apply from from the bank, not a prepaid card, but just a regular, you know, regular typical Visa charge card, PayPal is still depositing to that no problem. PayPal does not deposit to MasterCards in Trinidad. If you have a Visa recharge card, which is a Visa prepaid card, so that would be either the Republic BTM card, that's like the only prepaid Visa card we have, or if you were using a JMMB Visa debit card or a Venture Credit Union Visa debit card, PayPal was depositing the funds to them. PayPal last week blocked all the transactions to recharge cards. I did a live on that, I did a video on that. Um, I since reached, I reached out to PayPal again and I screenshot it. I sent the screenshots of what the previous rep said. I even sent them a video of me getting blocked. And what they did was they checked out my account and said there was an error that they fixed. And I have since been able to deposit the funds from my PayPal to my JMMB Visa debit card account, my savings account with JMMB, all right? However, and this is the asterisk, the other people that I've been dealing with last week that had the same issues as me where they could not deposit the, the, the funds in the JMB account are still having the same issues. So what you have to do is if you are somebody who has been accustomed to depositing uh, your PayPal funds to your JMB account or to your prepaid Visa card, if that is still not working for you, reach out to PayPal. You, you can't call them, but you can send them an email and when you do that, let them know, hey, this is the message I'm getting. Send them a screenshot, have them check out your account um, so that they could advise you as to what the heck is going on. For me, it worked. They fixed my account. Well, they fixed and I am apparently good again, right? And deposits were happening instantaneously. As soon as I hit withdraw, money was in the account. So I, I like that. Next up, we dove into WePay. So WePay, again, quick recap. WePay, you could use them to send invoices. You could also use them as a payment processor for your website. If you are on Wix, sorry, not Wix, WordPress, uh, Big Cartel, and Magento. If you have a Shopify website, a Squarespace website, or a Wix website, you cannot use WePay directly as yet. To process the payments however that is where social pay comes in they can build a bridge for you and you can still use those platforms to process the payments and he would build the bridge with we pay and it would process on that all right nice um, and then we pay has some new services they just launched like their concierge service and their professional services the professional service they launch is like a directory where people can list their their their, their businesses and then uh, consumers can go to the list on WePay's site, select who they want to pay and send X amount of money to that uh, to that person that's in the drop down menu. I would definitely advise everybody go and get registered, make yourself available to be paid in as many ways as possible. That way you have options and you're not limited to just one person, okay? Um, next is Paywise. So with Paywise, you can, um, with Paywise is an offline, is an offline um, cash payment system. So you as a business owner would register with Paywise, you would get an account. With that account number, you would provide it to your, to your customers. Your customers would take your, your Paywise account to any agent that is listed as a PayWise dealer anywhere in Trinidad, that's, that's a PayWise agent, they would provide you with, or the customer would provide the agent with the number, the person would then say, hey, I want to pay this person, here's the number, here's the cash. Once the agent puts the money in, takes the cash, you get a notification saying this, uh, you, you got X amount of money, and it's in your bank account the next day. That is an offline 
uh, payment uh, system. What they launched last week was their new Paywise app. The Paywise app works like uh, you give the person your, 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 your same number, right? The person then has to log on to their online banking, transfer the money from their bank account to their Paywise account, and once the money is in their Paywise account, at that point, the person can pay you. However, if that is happening, the person can just pay you directly without having to pay any sort of Paywise fees. So I wouldn't tell you use Paywise with the app when they have to do the same steps to transfer the money to their Paywise wallet, and then they still have to send the money from, their pay, from the Paywise app when they could just, if they're already adding Paywise as a payee, they could just add you and send you the money directly, and then you don't have to pay the Paywise fees. All right? Keep that in mind. The only thing that might be different is the ETA as to when those deposits happen, because you know some banks take longer than others. So keep that in mind, right? That might be the one benefit to doing that. But again, you're paying for it, so heck, keep that in mind. We touched on Payoneer, right? So you can register for Payoneer. Payoneer gives you a bank account that you can connect to uh, PayPal, receive funds from PayPal. You can use it for Amazon. You can receive funds from Amazon affiliates. You can also get, if you if you are a freelancer here in Trinidad and you use things like Upwork, freelance.com, um, Fiverr, um, you can get paid on from those platforms on your Payoneer card as well. Um, then we talked about links, visa, debit cards. So keep in mind when you guys are looking, when you guys get your visa, your links, visa, debit cards, any visa debit, any visa debit card that has the links on the back is only good for security. It cannot be used for online payments. Okay. And last up was social pay. Um, social pay has a variety of services like the bridge payments, the payment links, the recurring payments, they can build point of sales and they can build custom website builders fully integrated with PayPal. All right. So now that we talked about the variety of payment methods in Trinidad, now is the Q&A session. So if you guys have questions, drop them in the comments and let's get them answered. I know we have a couple, so let me, get a, let me, let me take a sip. You guys drop your comments in the comment section. If you guys, you know, again, you guys enjoy the content. A lot of you guys have been tuning in with me for a while. Again, drop your likes, your hearts. Show, Keep showing the support. I love that. This is why we do this because at the end of the day, I want everybody to win. I want everybody to be able to get, get their business online and get paid. The truth is the organizations, the organizations, I'm going to hold up. The organizations aren't going to do these types of lives. They're not going to do these types of lives. They're not going to tell you any of this information, right? Many of them don't know. Others just don't want to tell you, right? So you guys jumping on these lives where we can get the information, we can put it out there for you. Again, your support means a lot. This is exactly why we keep on doing it. If there was no appetite or need for this type of information, trust and believe I wouldn't be here because you guys wouldn't be here, all right? All right, so. All right, so first things first. Marlon Alexander says, the JMB account needs to be a business account or can it be personal? So with JMB, they only give you Visa debit cards, they only give you Visa debit cards with JMB if you are opening up a personal account or a sole trader account. If it is a limited liability business, they will not give you a Visa debit card. All right. So only personal or a limited, or sorry, or a sole trader account will they give you a, J, uh, a Visa debit card. The cards come in two. They come in a black card and they come in a gold card. The black card has lower limits and you have to make in a certain amount of money to get the black card. The gold card has other limits and you have to be making another set of kind of money to get to get a gold card. All right. 
I won't say what the limits are because then people are going to be like, oh, this guy making money? What's going on? <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, let me see. Let me post. Let me pull some more some more questions. Again, guys, drop your comments. Drop your comments. Uh, Tamara said, well, best we forget Alden and his plug in the use social pay, cost affiliated. So <laughs> you, know, you, you still have to get a WePay account, I believe, right? Um, nonetheless, uh, I'll let Steph tackle that one for you because he'll tell you what, what the fees are. Um, let's see. The, lux the luxury beauty inclusive. Visa W you only get if it's a sole trader or what was the other. You only get if you're a sole trader account or a sole trader or a personal account. All right. So Visa Debit can only be personal or sole trader account. Let me see. I'm, I'm on the Instagram feed. Let me see what other questions we got. Lawyer Girl 868. Big up Sayerese. One of the baddest lawyers in all of Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> if I have a WordPress site, can I connect directly with WePay? Yes, you can. So I actually have some videos, uh, I've, I've done it in a webinar a couple of times, where I've shown people how to connect um, their WePay account on WordPress. Um, you just download their plugin and it connects right into WooCommerce and it shows up right as an option that you just turn on and you put in your account number and your secret key that they give you and that is it. That is all for WePay integration into your WordPress website. It is easy peasy lemon squeezy. Can I integrate repay with WordPress? Yes, you can. We just answered that. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, bam, bam, bam. Why would the financial institutions? Let me put that up there. Let me put that up there. So, John Toha. Why would the ins financial institutions not want to educate us in their cards? That's a very good question. The reality is, is that what do they educate you on? You tell me that. What do the financial institutions, what does any institution educate you on? Right? If the institutions were educating you on how to use their products and services, I would not be here. I wouldn't have an audience because the institutions would be doing a bang up job. When we're talking about digital transformation, the reason why we're so, we're so far behind is nobody is educating the public on how to use any of these services. And here's the difference, right? And I'm, I'm gonna make this clear. The difference is, I grew up in Canada, right? This is my sixth year in Trinidad. When we were going through our digital transformation, Every institution, every bank, every telecommunications provider, you name it, night schools, colleges, universities, everybody had free workshops showing you exactly how to use their products and services. In Trinidad, the only thing, the absolute only thing any institution has done is an ad. Right now, Scotiabank has a million ads. Use this is how you do online banking. No, when you were in Canada back in 2009, everywhere you went, you walked into a branch, you had some annoying person at the door saying, Hey, have you signed up for online banking? No, why not? Come over here. We have a class in 15 minutes telling you how to use online banking. Or when it was dead, they dragged you to a computer and they showed you exactly how to do everything on a computer with online banking. I have never seen that in, in, in Trinidad and Tobago. I've never seen that. So nobody, I don't, I don't, listen, I don't care who you are. Nobody can tell me that digital transformation is happening in Trinidad. None of the institutions are taking it seriously. None of them are doing anything that any other countries, even the poorer countries in Africa, are texting money to each other. So don't tell me it's just a first world thing because even the poorer countries in Nigeria and Ghana, these people are texting each other money. We, we, we're, 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 we're telling people to use Paywise and use cash to, to, to pay me and I get it. No, man, that, that, that's whatever. 
You guys didn't get me in trouble. <laughs> back to questions, back to questions, back to questions. All right, so uh, pay me tutorial. I can't do that on this live, Elroy. Uh, let's see, who else? Let's see, who else? The big boss, Maurice. Maurice, issue with institutions is about not wanting to, it's about regulation. I don't want to insult Karen, but we are not going through a digital transformation. Bro, but you're right. I, I'm a, I just said that. I just said that. We're not going through a digital transformation. We, we are not. I know what that looks like. I grew up in it. It's not happening here. We have tools, but we lack the education, and without the push from the institutions, it's going to happen slow. Right? It's going to happen slow. Um, how long does it take for the transfer funds? Simi, um, for which transfer funds? Tell me which, tell me which uh, payment service. Uh, Keisha, Zimbabwe, yes, for, for, for sure. Maurice, why well, try to ignore the role of Paywise in the market? I don't. I fully explained exactly what Paywise does. Not ignoring them at all. I gave them a whole section on how Paywise works and how you can make it work for your business. So I definitely did not ignore them. I use Paywise. Um, they have their need. Um, it's just about understanding when to use Paywise and when to use the other services right? and putting that into perspective. Any updates on the WePay MasterCard demo? Um, well, they said give them to the end of the month. So we still have a couple of days. Um, I'm more worried about, you know, what is WePay doing with where are our plugins for Shopify and Wix? That is what I want to know uh, because he promised that he promised that for next week. So we're going to hold him to that. But for the WePay MasterCard, the Rebel Card, that's going to be coming out at the end of the month. And the only reason I have not gone into that is because it's not here yet. So as you guys may or may not know, WePay is going to be launching their, their WePay Rebel Card, their partnership with MasterCard. That is supposed to be coming out at the end of the month. Um, when that happens, when we have all the details, um, we'll definitely get into that and talk about that. All right? Another payment processor that um, I did not touch on today would be First Atlantic Commerce. And the reason I haven't talked, to, I haven't touched on First Atlantic Commerce is because I'm going to be having a webinar, um, an interview with myself and Christopher Burns, who's the CEO of First Atlantic Commerce. Um, we're in the we're in the stages of prepping that, um, but we are looking for next week. So we can talk about First Atlantic Commerce and what they're doing within the Caribbean and what they're doing within Trinidad and all the banks, everything that you need to know about First Atlantic Commerce. Um, I'm bringing in the boss himself and we're going to talk to him directly about First Atlantic Commerce because the big conception or the, the, big, the big conception about FAC is that it is not for small entrepreneurs and businesses. It is only for corporates and enterprises. Um, so we want to clear a lot of that stuff up. And I think there's a lot of misconception about it because when you go into the bread, when you go into the to the banks, when you ask them for merchant ID accounts, many of them have no idea what you're talking about. And getting a merchant ID account is a painstaking process. All right. So we're gonna bring in Christopher Burns, the CEO of First Atlantic Commerce. That's gonna be happening next week, and we're gonna talk about FAC. The other webinar that's gonna be happening later on this week is. Um, if you've heard of Figaro, Figaro is a partnered is, is a is a platform that works exactly like Shopify, but for the entire Caribbean. And that is a project that First Atlantic Commerce and and DHL have partnered on to provide you a platform to host your products, the payment processor using FAC, and then also DHL for logistics. So I'm going to be sitting with the CEO of Figaro later on this week. That is going to be our webinar coming out to the end of this week, most likely on Thursday. I'll confirm and put that information out there. Um, and as soon as that gets, as soon as that gets confirmed, you guys will know. Um, but that's going to be later on this week. So we're going to be doing one with Figaro and then one with the CEO of FAC next week. All right. Marlon said, I have a Facebook page for business, but not a website as yet. Can I still have online payments? Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Yes, if you use something like social pay for pay links, 
Yes, you could use your Facebook page and you could use social page pay links and you can process those payments um, with just using your Facebook page. If, but I say no because not in a traditional sense. So social page is going to give you a kind of a roundabout way to do it with pay links. But typically how it would work is when we use Facebook, um, Facebook e-commerce, so the, actually conducting the transaction on Facebook is, is restricted only to the U.S. So countries outside of the U.S., for us here in the Caribbean, we have to connect a payment platform. So that, that platform could be Shopify, it could be Wix, it could be WordPress. But we have to connect a platform so that when, when we list our products on Facebook and then connect it to Instagram, when people click on the product in the Instagram shop or the Facebook shop, it takes us to our website where the commerce can actually happen. However, if you, if you work with social pay, social pay can build your pay links out so that when, person, when a person clicks on the product in your shop, um, the pay link will bring up the payment page and you guys can go from there. All right, so I hope that answered your question. Any more questions, just drop them in. Drop them in. Let me know if you have any remaining questions. If you do not have any more questions, then we could safely wrap up. We can safely wrap up. Let me know if you guys have any more questions. I'll take one or two other questions and we'll go from there. Nick Alexander said they are willfully keeping the e-commerce market down. <sighs> That's how I feel. That, that is how I feel. Until they, until they roll out the Visa debit cards and turn on the e-commerce side of things, um, adoption for e-commerce and online payments is going to take a little bit longer. It's going to take longer than it, than it really should. But the minute they turn on e-commerce for the Visa debit cards, like I said, I can't confirm, but it could happen. <laughs> when, if, because I can't confirm, but when, if they turn on the e-commerce for Visa debit, e-commerce will flourish within Trinidad because everybody will then have the ability to pay you online. All right. Um, okay. Thrustin said... Hold on. Uh, Harvey said, what Forex Trader bro bro would you recommend? Easy. Jason Shuffler. Just, go just jump on Facebook. Type in Jason Shuffler or Jason Francis. He'll hook you up. Uh, tonight's webinar was hella informative. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Johan said, does your Payoneer account have to be verified before getting the card? Um, I'm not too sure. I just registered for mine today. But I'm going to be bringing on somebody who uses Payoneer religiously. Um, hopefully next week, um, and when I'll, I'll make that announcement when the date is confirmed, so we could talk about affiliate marketing, making YouTube money. I know when you guys hear me talk about YouTube money, you guys know who I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, Steph said, "What are my views on oil?" Huh? Boy, I don't even know what to say about that. Um, yeah, if we don't have any more questions, yeah, I think we could call it a night. Let's call it a night. It's, it's, we hit the hour and a half mark. I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Big round of applause for yourself. And if you were here from start to finish, big up yourself. <laughs> all right. Once again, man, thank you guys for tuning in. These webinars are hella fun. Um, again, if whatever information questions you guys have, be sure to send them to me. Um, I either always answer them in the DMs or I do these lives and I get the information, bring it to you guys. I try to keep it to within topics that I'm actually doing. Um, and also, if I'm not directly doing it, what I will do is I'm going to start to bring on some guests because we still have a lot of questions. There's still a lot of ways to get paid online and there's, there's many people doing great things. I have never been much of an interviewer. I've always been more of a, hey... This is how you do it, and let me show you how to do it. My content is always, I always try to keep my content practical and relevant and instructional, but you know what? We might just have to start jumping into some interviews because, you know, you guys have some questions, and I have questions, 
and I have questions and I can't get answers, but guess what? We can start to bring some people who have those answers onto the show, right? We're gonna have to brand this. I've been I've been thinking that we're gonna brand this as the Digital Age webinar series with your host Karen Rose. If that is sounding beautiful to you guys, we're just gonna run with that. All my webinars gonna be the Digital Age webinar series. All right. So I want to thank all of you. Big ups to Stefan in the comments from Social Pay and Overmill helping me out with regulating some of the comments about some of those services. Kira, good night, good night, good night, and thank you for tuning in. Uh, where do we go, where do we go? Melina, thank you for tuning in. Thank you, yeah, shoot me a message. Jean Troja, thank you. Josiah Celestin, big up yourself, thank you for tuning in. Marlon, thank you. I wanna say your name, but Miss, Miss Duke, I can't say the first name. And Renika Francis, thank you again for tuning in. And my Instagram fam, Kyle, Nick, Melissa, thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you guys in the next one. We're going to have one later on this week. It will be with the CEO of Figaro. Um, stay tuned for those details. I have those things posted. And you guys have yourself a wonderful night. <sighs> night, folks. Stay safe.